What I'd like to do now is just very quickly highlight some principles of exploratory data analysis as it was developed by John Tukey and then differentiate exploratory spatial data analysis, the ESDA from EDA. And the differentiation has everything to do with what we talked about last week, what is special about spatial analysis, this lack of locational invariance. And the focus on location and spatial aspects of the data is what differentiates ESDA from EDA. But otherwise, it's the same idea. And the idea is, I think, summarized very nicely in this quote. I have included this article by I.J. Good in the references. It's in, um, it's in a philosophy journal, but uh, it's, it's interesting. It, it tells you a little bit of where, where this is coming from in terms of the philosophy of science, because this is very, if you wish, non-scientific because it relies on judgment, it relies on interaction of the analyst with the data and as I often say some people are good at it and some people are lousy at it. I mean the two people stare at the same picture one sees something the other one doesn't and that is the part that makes scientists uncomfortable about this exploratory data analysis. Discovering potentially explicable patterns now, three important aspects here. Patterns means structure. Explicable means that eventually we'll be able to explain that structure, why it happened. And potentially means that maybe we will, maybe we won't. So the actual explanation is not part of the exploratory exercise. What the exploratory exercise is about is sifting through all this information and drilling down on the interesting parts. That's what it's about. So just like a box plot tells you these are the outliers and so basically forget about the rest. Let's focus on these outliers. Uh, a lot of these devices are similarly focused on identifying observations. In our case these will be locations that are interesting in some respect. And we'll see many different ways in which they are interesting. Being an outlier is only one aspect of these. And as our tool, as we already mentioned, we'll use data visualization, where we use the term of a view as any graphical representation or summary of the data. So the view is not, forget about ArcGIS and that whole lingo, a view in our context is anything that summarizes the data. For example, a table is a view of the data. A graph, a histogram is a view of the data. A map is a view of the data. And so what EDA is about, what a lot of EDA is about, is designing new views of the data that are efficient and effective in suggesting patterns, in suggesting interesting patterns. The S in ESDA is the focus, as I mentioned, on location and space. So whereas EDA might be interested in summarizing and describing distributions of data, in ESDA we're interested in summarizing the spatial distributions. Where things are. Are things randomly distributed over the map or are they systematically more in one part of the city than in other part of the city? That's a summary of the spatial distribution. We'll formalize that more when we get into the point patterns next week with an actual, for example, mean location as a descriptor of the spatial distribution. As we already saw, we try to identify, or we would like to identify, atypical distributions. We call those outliers. Now, what we'll see later is that the concept of an outlier in space is not necessarily the same as a traditional concept, and that a spatial outlier will be a location that is very different from its neighbors. Whereas an outlier as is, is a very high value, irrespective of the neighbors or where it is located. Okay. Similarly, patterns of spatial association or autocorrelation have to do with identifying uh, the extent to which things are more similar in similar locations. 
That's the concept of spatial autocorrelation. The counterpart of this is spatial heterogeneity, is we try to identify subsets of the data, spatial subsets of the data, that are very different. For example, in our Columbus crime map, we saw that the center of the city was very different from the suburbs, if you wish, to the extent that it might suggest a mixing of two distributions, one for the periphery and one for the core. We will call those spatial regimes. They're separate, they're subsets of the data, spatial subsets of the data, where maybe different models have to be applied or different um, statistical summaries have to be applied. We'll get into this more later. So you see, this is all the same. It's about identifying patterns, interesting patterns, but these patterns are now specifically spatial. We're interested in locations, in subregions of the data, subsets of the data, and so on. And the main mechanism by which we do this identifying of interesting patterns is interaction with the data. As I already mentioned a couple of times, you are supposed to not just sit there and look at the map, but you deal with the map, you manipulate the map, you move it around, you focus, you zoom in, you connect things together by linking them, you bring in different perspectives of the same data to try to get new insight. That's what exploratory data analysis is about, and the, the technology through which this is accomplished is called dynamic graphics. And dynamic graphics is a computer technology that allows you to change the graphics on the screen on the fly. And, and in our particular case, that means change statistical summaries of the data on the fly. And um, the concepts that we use to accomplish this are, they're very important. They're linking and brushing. And they're all about selecting specific observations. And we select these by clicking on them in a graphical interface. So by selecting them, we somehow single them out. What linking means is that that singling out is accomplished in every view of the data. Remember, a view is some kind of summary of the data. So if you select, say, an entry in a table, that same entry is highlighted in a scatter plot, in a histogram, in a map, etc. That is the notion of linking. So it's very important that you realize it doesn't matter where you do the linking. It could be anywhere that you select an observation or a subset of, 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 of observations. The linking part means that this is instantiated in all the views of the data immediately. Brushing, and I'll show you in a second. Brushing is a dynamic version of linking. So linking is doing, making a selection, wait and see. In brushing, you change the selection. And as you change the selection on the fly, the same observations are highlighted in all the views of the data. 